In this lesson, we are going to review the different types of renewable energy technologies and their basic operating principles. The term renewable essentially means that the energy source is not limited on a human time scale. This, however, does not always mean that it has an infinite capacity. We will see that different sources of renewable energy have different limitations, which must be taken into account when tuning the technologies to a particular application and location. The main types of renewable energy resources are solar, wind, geothermal, hydro, biomass, and tides. The technologies that are designed to convert those kinds of available natural energy to a usable power or heat are expected to play a significant role in the future energy economy. However, markets involving those technologies are still developing. And at the moment, it is not so easy to predict which of them will become most prominent. Photovoltaic effect or PV effect is the conversion of the sunlight energy into electricity. In a PV system, the PV cells exercise this effect. Semiconducting materials in the PV cell are doped to form PN structure as an internal electric field. The P-type silicon has the tendency to give up electrons and acquire holes, while the N-type silicon accepts electrons. When sunlight hits the cell, the photons in light excite some of the electrons in the semiconductors to become electron hole pairs. Since there is an internal electric field, these pairs are induced to separate. As a result, the electrons move to the negative electrode while the holes move to the positive electrode. If there is an external load connected across the positive and the negative electrodes, then the circuit is closed and the electric current is generated to supply the external load. This is how the photovoltaic effect works in a solar cell. Uh, the PV cells are connected together to form a PV module, and the modules are connected together to form a PV panels. And the PV panels are connected together to form a PV system. Since the sun energy is not constant due to weather change, a DC to DC converter is used to regulate the output electricity of the BV system. Then the regulated DC output of the BV system is converted into EC output via an inverter. This is because most of the appliances are AC dependent. Those electronic instruments are called power electronic converters and they are very important instruments to harness most types of renewable energy resources. The energy in the wind is harnessed by the use of a wind turbine. The wind turbine consists of two to six blades. When the wind flows across the blade, the air pressure on one side of the blade decreases. The difference in air pressure across the two sides of the blade creates both lift and drag forces. The blades are usually designed in a such a way that the resultant lift force is much stronger than the drag force, and this causes the rotor to spin. The rotor is connected to the generator, either directly if it's a direct drive turbine, or through a shaft and series of gears that speeds up the rotation of the generator shaft. This translation of aerodynamic force into rotation of the generator creates electricity. Wind turbines are usually mounted on a tower to capture the most wind energy. At 30 meters or more above the ground, they can take advantage of a faster and less turbulent wind. 
Wind turbines can be used to produce electricity for a single home or building, or they can be connected to an electricity grid for more widespread electricity distribution. Since the wind speed is not constant, the resultant electricity from the generator is not constant as well. In order to resolve this issue, the output voltage of the generator is rectified, then regulated, and then inverted back to AC constant voltage. Usually, the needed power electronic converters to do this conversion are built in with the commercial wind turbines. The geothermal power plant uses hydrothermal energy of the earth for heating and electricity production. The hydrothermal energy resource is an energy source which has both water and heat. The heat beneath the earth, which we call the magma, is used to heat the water present inside the earth. The hydrothermal resources are brought to the surface of the earth by dry wells and hot water wells. The temperature that is required for the working of the geothermal power plant starts from 150 to 370 degrees Celsius. Uh, the hot water first brought to the surface and then it's converted into steam. Then the steam strikes the turbine blades and causing it to rotate. Since the generator is coupled with the turbine shaft, so it also rotates with the turbine and produces electricity. Historically, in the 20th century, the increase in the electricity demands put a necessity to discover some other sources to produce electricity. And it was geothermal sources. It was 4th of July, 1904, when Prince Pierrot Conti tested the first geothermal power generator in uh, Larderello city in Italy. This lit four or five light bulbs. Nowadays, the geothermal electricity is used in 24 countries and geothermal heating is in use in more than 70 countries. A power plant which uses the potential energy of the water to generate electricity is called a hydroelectric power plant. Hydroelectric power plants are usually located in hilly areas where dams can be built easily and large water reservoirs can be made. In a hydro power plant, water head is created by building a dam across a river or a lake. From the dam, the water is fed to the water turbine. The water turbine changes the kinetic energy of the falling water into mechanical energy at the turbine shaft. So, in simple words, falling water spins the water turbine. The turbine drives the generator, which is coupled to it, and converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy. This is the basic working principle of the hydroelectric power plant. The hydroelectric energy, or simply called hydropower, is the leading source of renewable energy in the world for electricity generation. Nearly 7% of the energy consumed in the world is generated by hydroelectricity. Biomass is organic matter from plants and animals. Uh, photosynthesis is the name of the process that stores the energy from sunlight in plants. Animals get this energy by eating the plants. Waste such as crops, manure, and garbage are all excellent sources of biomass fuel. There are several methods to convert biomass into electricity. The first one is simply by burning biomass directly, heat water to steam, and sending it through a steam turbine, which then generates electricity. The second way requires a gasification of biomass. Biomass gasifier 
takes the dry biomass such as agricultural waste and with the absence of oxygen and the presence of high temperatures produces synthesis gas. The anaerobic digestion or gasification process turns wet biomass such as food waste and manure into methane in a digestion tank. Both methane and synthesis gas can be used in a gas engine or a gas turbine for electricity production. A third way to produce electricity from biomass is by using fuel cells. If we have biogas or biosynthesis gas with high enough purity, we can use fuel cells to produce bioelectricity. We have to be careful because the fuel cell breaks down quickly if the gas contains any impurities. However, the technology is not yet commercialized. There are several other types of new interesting biofuels coming such as algae biofuel. Tidal energy or tidal power is a form of renewable energy obtained due to alternating sea levels. The kinetic energy from the natural rise and fall of tides is harnessed and converted into electricity. Tides are caused by combined gravitational forces of the moon, sun, and the earth. However, tides are mostly influenced by the moon. The moon's gravitational force is so strong that it tugs the ocean into bulge. The high and low tides create tidal currents, which are essential to the turbines to generate electricity. Generation of this kind of energy is mostly common in coastal areas. The tidal energy is considered a renewable energy resource because the oceans and seas will remain until the end of time, and the tides are highly predictable. Tidal power has a great potential for future as tides can be much more accurately predictable than the wind and the sun. Although it is available in plenty due to the massive size of the oceans, harnessing energy from it is still not that easy. It suffers from huge investment cost. The first commercial-sized tidal power plants was located in La Rance in France. The largest facility is in South Korea called Sihua Lake Tidal Power Station. In general, China, France, England, Canada, and Russia have much more potential to use this type of energy.